All right. Well, hey, thanks for uh, dropping in for another episode of Triple Play. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. And also, uh, we want to give a special shout out to our support from Brooks Bible College. Brooks Bible College is a local uh, Bible college here in the Midwest. If you're looking uh, to get a Bible degree or a counseling degree on a budget, um, the average church is only 75 people and you cannot run a church on 75 people unless there are a lot of independently wealthy people in that church uh, with student loans of over hundred grand. So Bi Brooks Bible College was initially started over a hundred years ago to help lay people get an education. They've since in great place for lay people too. Don't want to discourage that at all. If you're somebody who needs to grow, go there. But they also uh, have uh, become accredited and uh, are putting out missionaries and pastors in areas. But again, if you're looking to get into ministry, don't want to carry a lot of debt, I want to be able to honor the Lord and, and, and you know, you know, you're not going to probably be in a, this big mega church. Um, consider giving them a call. Great biblical grounding. You'll have a well-rounded education. Promise you. I've had so many discussions with their president and several of the folks there. Um, I don't think I ever walk away not impressed. And uh, if you've listened to our podcast in, a, in the past, you probably know this, but I'll just point it out that uh, when we have had uh, uh, the Midwest Messianic uh, Center on, um, they graduated from uh, Brooks Bible College. So um, consider, again, uh, if you're looking to, to deepen your relationship with the Lord and want to get a, uh, get a little more formal education, uh, checking it out, Brooks Bible College. That said, we got a great guest today, a returning friend of mine. Yeah. Not returning to the podcast, but returning. We hadn't talked in almost, what, 20 years? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Been too long. Yeah. Been way too long. Yeah. Uh, but her name is Becky Lobinger, and uh, Becky is married uh, to an incredible guy. We were just talking about Bradford, um, and uh, he's a pastor in Deloge, um, Missouri. Uh, so if you're in that area and you're looking for a good church, check out First Baptist Deloge. I'll put a little plug in there for him. So... Um, uh, without a question, know that he's good. And uh, uh, I love your husband. Got to know him in college. Uh, we were just saying things that I would describe him. Kind-hearted, servant-hearted, um, well-rounded. I mean, you just great guy all the way around. Yeah. And he's a now a doctor, as you just pointed out. So, yes. Dr. Brad Lobinger. Hmm. I'm not sure that rings too well, Bradley. PBL most of the time, Pastor Bradford Lobinger, PBL. Uh, all right, well... That being said, uh, uh, we have you here today because I was looking online and I saw that you were saying, hey, I, I'm going to put my name out there and run for um, Missouri Congress. I'm going to go after a, a house seat. And uh, so I was like, well, I want to hear this story because that is so like far from what I know of you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, and I, had, I figured it had to be out of your comfort zone. I've watched you raise your kids and yeah. online and, and you and Brad, and, and I'm like, okay, I got to hear the story of what <laughs> what transpires to, to do that. And then, you know, kind of, you know, what are you wanting to accomplish? Because obviously you don't go in there without a goal, right? So there's something that both inspired you and also something that you want to see change. Mm -hmm. um, but... I want to get there, but I also want to get into a little bit of who you are. So give us a little bit about your background. Where'd you grow up? Um, you know, where'd you go to school? The famous St. Louis question. And, <laughs> and you know, um, tell us a little bit about your family life and, and, and then maybe that'll, and your testimony and then how that kind of probably sprung in your politics. Sure. So. All right. Well, I grew up on the western side of the state, the flat side of the state. Uh, so I was born in Nevada, grew up in Warrensburg. And I am number four of five kids. So uh, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, and my dad was an electrical engineer, and um, then had a hobby farm. So we had cattle. That was the that was the hobby. Um, so it was fun uh, living in the country, living in a. Um, Air Force town and college town. So there's always transition in the town that I grew up in. So that was, I, I really appreciate that about um, growing up is just learning to meet new people and just it became a welcoming town because there's so much transition with military and a college town. So that was fun. I, I came to Christ it, as a I was seven or eight. It was a revival service, and I had grown up in church, and so I knew all the Bible stories. But that night, they had a special message for the kids, and just it finally hit me that this was personal. 
that I personally needed Jesus to forgive my sins. So that was salvation. And then just as you grow from a seven or eight year old who's really not committed a lot of sins in your life, more sins happen for um, people who become Christians as kids after they become Christians. And so that testimony looks a little bit different for them than maybe the the powerful total life change uh, testimony that captures a lot of people's interests. And I think a lot of Christians struggle with their testimony when they became Christians early. But that doesn't mean that you aren't saved. That's part of just growth as a person. Your brain develops more as you become a teenager and, and just well, all I think, of the... I think what you're saying is, is just because you became a Christian doesn't mean you're perfect, right? Right. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. we're still in our sin body and our yep. sin ways. Um, I think the difference is the Holy Spirit continues to influence you and tell you, you know, point out those sins in your life where God's wanting to work and, right. and you just learn to surrender those. And so it's it's a process. Yeah. Even those that have the great story, at the end of the day, they're still growing. And, and you know, we have this big word called sanctification, but really it sounds like a scary word. I always tell the kid, youth, I'm like, <laughs> you hear these adult words like sanctification. It sounds really scary. All that is, is the Bible says you're working out your faith, mm -hmm. okay? Some people call it the process of learning. Some people would say it's a process of becoming more Christ-like. That's all that is. That's right. just the work of the of God in your life, mm -hmm. growing and drawing near to Him. And as you work and draw near to Him, He reveals sin in your life. Yeah. You surrender those areas, and you, work, and you allow Him to work through you on those areas so that you become more like Christ every day. And that, does that mean that we don't fall back? Certainly not. Yeah. Just means hopefully that we're learning along the way, and that we're we're uh, surrendering those areas when we catch them. Hopefully, we catch them quicker the second time than we did the first time. If we repeat something, but we try not to repeat it. You know, just like Paul said, "Do I keep on sinning because I'm just free to sin?" No, I, Lord forbid that, right. because the, the the Holy Spirit in me wants to be more like Him. So yeah, I mean, yeah. I think your testimony is is a perfect example of that you just did it at an early age, and perfection yeah. is just a longer process because you're aware of your sin much sooner. Yeah, and I think uh, what I struggled with as a teen was assurance of salvation. Um, just that, did I really mean it when I was a kid? And the focus was on me, what I meant or didn't mean, how much I had sinned or not sinned. And so there was a, there were, uh, it was about a year and a half, maybe two years that almost every night I would pray the sinner's prayer and uh, pray that God would save me. And then finally, one night, God shifted my perspective. It's not the the amount of my faith it is the work of christ that jesus died on the cross he accomplished salvation on the cross and so my faith is in his work and not in do i have perfect sincerity when i'm praying the sinner's prayer or did i did i not mess up today um so that was very freeing so that's why i feel like my testimony is two parts there's that early salvation as a, a child but god's Holy Spirit working and growing and sanctifying me, but also getting me past looking at my own amount of faith or quality of faith to look to Him, hmm. that He is He's done the work. And so, from there, I love Him and grow in Him. And so, anyway, that was the testimony part. I ended up over on the St. Louis side of the state because of college. Well, actually, it wasn't because of college. I, um, I started college at Southwest Baptist and then could you did. I, I did. I did. I know. I, know. I was an SBUer for one semester. I couldn't afford to stay there. <laughs> it was too expensive. Okay. So then growing up in a college town, I went, I moved back home and went for a year and a half there and um, really wanted to go back to a Christian college. I had some great friends at the, the school I went to at home, um, but I, I wanted to s just be immersed in biblical studies. And so Where'd then, you get your degree in it was biblical studies. Biblical studies, yeah. Okay. So I, I really um, didn't know what God wanted me to do. I was thinking uh, missions. So I was like, well, this is probably what I should study. So anyway, I had applied to be a summer missionary through the Missouri Baptist Convention, and they placed me in St. Louis, and so that's how I ended up over here. And when I worked. Um, it was, they placed me at Third Baptist Church, actually, and the pastor there was on the board of Mobab. And I really didn't know anything about Mobab before then, but he 
encouraged me to check it out. And so that's how I ended up at Missouri Baptist. I remember that summer missionary time. Yeah. Yeah. Josh Joke. That's how I know Josh. Yeah. Well, and 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 how, now a lot of I, I didn't realize the story now that I'm I'm, I'm playing through my head now. So, yep, 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 the old house. Over a lot, yes, the house there, yeah. Yep, the three-story house, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is, it, it, it is, it's a small world and it's crazy times, but yeah, so... So the, you, that leads you to Mobab, and that's where uh, I met you. Yes. So, yeah, so and your husband, right? Yeah, we met there, um, and then uh, it was after college that we dated, and then got married. Um, at, he was at Southern studying, and I had gone to Southern to study as well, and still thinking missions. So I knew that God was calling me to serve Him, and as a woman, I wasn't really sure what that looked like. Well, like how <laughs> do women serve in, in the kingdom of God? And so, uh, missions seem like this is the field. <laughs> so, uh, I, but God called me to be a pastor's wife. And so, we got married in 99. We have four kids. So, our oldest is serving through with the North American Mission Board in the state of Georgia, almost to the Florida line. She works for a foster kids camp and they are crazy busy all the time. Mm. Their motto is, if there is a need, we will we'll find a way to fill it, basically. So, it's amazing. Um, our second child is completing college and he is engaged, going to get married in May. We're super excited. She's a sweetheart. That's awesome. We're like, don't mess this up. <laughs> She's amazing. And then I have a 16-year-old and a 13-year-old, junior in high school an eighth grader. So that's our kids. And we lived in Kentucky for a while and then moved to moved back to Missouri in 2009. Um, so I know in Kentucky, you were going to Southern when, when he came back to the States, did I'm trying to remember, did, did he have the job at Deloge at that time? Yeah. Or did you move back and then go there? Nope. Uh, moved back for the, the church job. at, yeah. Okay. At Deloge. So yeah. And we've been there since 2009. So that's one thing that I appreciate about Bradford is he's very um, committed, very steady. He's not one to move around a lot. He's going to work through if there's highs and lows, he's not going to jump ship. He's going to work through it um, until God moves him somewhere else, which doesn't happen often. So yeah, I've, I've learned a lot. I grew up moving about every three years, even though it wasn't necessarily to a different town all of the time. It was just that shift in location. So that's been something I've had to learn is yeah, steadiness. We we actually had a great episode. Do you know, do you listen to Joy FM? Uh-huh. And Kim was on here a couple weeks uh-huh. ago and she was talking about the same thing. Like, you know, for her, it was being rooted. She called yeah. it rooted yeah. and she had never been rooted. And, uh, since she, and, and since she's come to St. Louis, she feels, you know, now that she's rooted. And uh, I thought that was a great, great, yeah. great idea, great picture that, you know, you're kind of moving around and now you're rooted yeah. into a community and, and into an area where you just feel God's got you. And right. all the rest of it was just prepping you to there, right? right. So, you know, she moves you somewhere else, that's where you lay your roots. Mm-hmm. So, that's, that's great. So, that's, that's really cool. So, you have all these kids, you're doing all this, and then... How does this running to <laughs> for the house come about? So, how does this all play out? So, so in between that, as I was a stay at home mom for a lot of years, um, and then did some part time jobs. Um, now, let's be honest. Stay at home mom means you were working really hard <laughs> with kids. Plus, your pastor's wife, which I imagine you know, when you're like, "Well, I wasn't sure how." Look, pastors' wives minister probably as much, sometimes even more. Every pastor I know will say because of all the needs that are in a church. And uh, and then there's the people who won't go to a pastor, but will go to the wife. Uh, and uh, and then there's the relationships that pastors just can't have that a wife can have with other women. Right. Uh, all all part of the life of a church that needs to, to thrive and, and be there. So obviously you were, you were working really, probably overtime during that period of time. I know my own wife works really, really hard. So, mm-hmm. um, how do, so how does that transition? Go ahead. So, so and I'm also the director of a pregnancy resource center. So that's been the more, um, I guess that's kind of helped me get to the place where I feel like I can take on running. I've had to, I'm the executive director at the pregnancy resource center. And so 
serving people whose worldview is completely different than mine. And um, then also seeing some of the fallout of some policies that are meant to help, but in the long term have harmed families mm. and have put us in a position where um, so part of what I do with work is teaching teens about healthy relationships. And just a couple of weeks ago, I ask kids, so what would be the best case scenario for having a baby? When, the, when would that be most welcome? And so the answers were, when I have a steady job, when I have a steady house, when the baby daddy isn't a loser. Nobody said anything about marriage. Hmm. And it it was a room full of students and no one brought that up as something that is positive or necessary for having a family. And it's it's not that you can't have a baby outside of marriage. We, and we help people all the time who are in difficult situations learn to thrive with their kids. Yeah, but if but, we asked that question 30 years ago... Mm -hmm. Marriage probably would have been a number one am right. answer, right? It would have been like when you're married and have kids and are able to afford it or something like that would have right. been like your answer. Not, you know, when you got a good baby's daddy or mm -hmm. when you got the career that you've, that you've chosen. These are, these are the, the uh, humanistic ideas that our, our society has fed into um, our school systems for the last 30 years or so. And really, it's not just in the school life. systems. It, a lot of it comes from the parents. And some of it we see because because parents have struggled in their marriages and homes and feel like it doesn't work, so why even try? And yet, you know, the statistics are that kids who are raised in single-parent homes don't do not do as well financially uh, in, when they reach adulthood. It's not impossible, it's just harder. And so, even just setting aside what God wants for the family from the cultural aspect that mindset is undermining our culture too. Mm. And if you look at it from a productivity aspect, it's undermining productivity because kids raised in without their fathers are more likely to be in poverty. And so we're creating more poverty instead of advancing our culture. And that has not, that doesn't even touch what God's good design is for families. So just seeing things like that, um, has made me more interested in policies and politics, but I really had no desire to run. Bradford, my husband, has been telling me for several years that I should, and I really thought he was joking because he hates politics. He is a Gen Xer. He just wants to mind his own business and serve his community and not get involved in things that are beyond his control. He wants to focus on what he can control and... I appreciate that. So I really didn't pay attention to that. But then um, it was during one of the last national big elections that I'm watching candidates or I'm hearing candidates talk and they're saying that they stand for um, conservative values. But then you look at their lives and they aren't living conservative values and it is one thing to stand firm on policy that's going to be good, but I also, I was just frustrated. Why, why do we not have candidates who do well, uh, who seem to not live out the values that our side says that they stand for? And that really is on us voters, like who we are supporting as voters we're choosing candidates who maybe get us all fired up politically, but if you look at the substance of how they live, it's not there. So I was, I was frustrated that we didn't have more quality candidates doing well. I'm sure there are quality candidates that stepped up to run, but why are they not doing well? And then uh, just began to get more and more convicted. I would read scripture and pray and talk to people and it, I, it, God was just convicting me that if I want somebody else to run, why am I not being willing to do what I'm wanting someone else to do? And then as I began to consider running, God just kept confirming that over and over. And every thing that I would put up as, no, I can't run because my kids are still young. And I, you know, I'm there, I have to be there as the, they have to be my, my focus. 
And God, within 24 hours, God reassured me that he had them and he's the one who does the work in their hearts anyway. And it's not that I abandoned my kids, but if I'm gone for a little while, if I were to be elected, then I also can trust that he's going to continue the good work that he started in them. All of my kids are Christians and, and are show that the Holy Spirit is at work in their life and convicting them and growing them. So anyway, I finally ran out of excuses and said, yes, Lord, I will run and we'll see what he does. And so Bradford, when it, how, was he excited when you gave him the news that I'm going to put my hat, my, 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 I'm going to put my name in the hat or was he kind of like, uh, uh, okay, well, I know I've been encouraging that way, but I'm not so. Well, He's like, I've been telling you this for years. Well, <laughs> that was it. He was like, it's about time. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's great. All right. So, so you're running. Well, and I, I kind of through your conversation heard some undertones. So if, uh, you can help me out if I'm right. You feel like you um, hear uh, the voice of what's going on in the culture a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're looking for substance. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's hard to lead people where you don't go. Right. You know, so that's what I kind of kept thinking when you were saying those who talk mm -hmm. conservative values but don't live them. You know, mm -hmm. uh, more is is caught than is taught you know and yeah, uh, so we want to live out the values that we that we're talking about mm -hmm. and admit when we when we're wrong it, it isn't again we were talking earlier about church it, when we're wrong it's, that's okay but admit it and right. change course right i think sometimes um in politics we expect them to be perfect the problem i think is is when they feel like they can't admit that they've made a sin mm -hmm. and and change course you know it's okay to, to admit hey man i screwed up i shouldn't have done that or i shouldn't have voted that way i apologize yeah um and i did not do my my constituents well on that one and i need yeah. a, to be better uh but next round i think people respect mm -hmm. true honesty and true repentance right. so right well and even I, I told somebody a couple of months ago, I'm going to let, if I am elected, I am going to let everyone down at some point because we, I don't, I don't agree with any one person on every single issue. I don't even agree with myself all the time. Like things I thought in high school, I no longer believe I, you grow and change. And if somebody is expecting some, a candidate who is going to line up with them on every single issue all the time, then you need to run. You need to be the one to run because I'm not going to align on every single issue. And uh, that is a lot of pressure on politicians to either. Yeah, go with the party, go with the flip party, yeah. but they tell you you do. You see that a lot and not being an independent thinker, not think things through what's really best for the people that I'm, right. I'm, I'm serving um, and the community I'm from because it may be good for St. Louis but it may not be good for right. all of Southern Missouri. Right. You Absolutely. know, and so my job is to, is to serve my, my area and what's best for my people. And uh, and also sometimes there are policies that the, the issue is a good issue to stand strong on but the way the policy is written would be bad. Like the fallout would be worse than the actual issue is bad so there are times that you if you just look at a candidate's voting record then you can go a lot of directions with what their record says if you look at the bills then you get a better perspective of okay so maybe maybe they still do believe what they say they believe but that was a poorly written bill and so following a candidate through more than just the voting record the voting record is super important but also paying attention to the details. why that voting record is the way it is yeah yeah the details we just had justin sparks in here um literally about a week or so ago and one of the things he was talking about is uh there's still republicans trying to do heartbeat beat bills and he's like why would we want a heartbeat bill we, we've already got a a bill in place that takes care of that and right. by doing that it literally is a step backwards it starts yeah. to allow them again not not pushes things forward and mm -hmm. you know good intentions that was that would have been a great bill prior to the overturning of roe versus wade so right. you know I, I think that uh uh uh, details, understanding the consequences, looking for the unintended consequences, right. and uh, and and you know chewing on 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 it a little bit. You know, I always tell people sometimes the best decision is to chew on it before you make a decision. You yes. know, and there's nothing wrong with with being a little bit intentionally slow, mm -hmm. uh, and and make sure you listen to the other side. You know, good de good decisions. Listen to both sides and hear the arguments. So that way you can 
make sure that you're 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 putting forth your best effort right. for for what you're doing. So and the other and I love that point because the other side may have a pulse on an actual need, and maybe I don't agree at all with the solution that's presented, but there may be a solution that actually would be effective um, and help out in a lot of ways. And maybe it's an issue that I can't can't align with, but I can respect the person as a person. And um, I think there's a lot of lack of respect in politics for, for people, treating people as people, as human beings created in God's image, whether I agree with them or not, God has still made them. They're alive. There's an opportunity for their, for them to hear the message of Christ and the hope of salvation. And so I always have to leave room for the gospel in conversations with people, even if on issues <laughs> we don't we don't agree at first. If I if I push people away too much, then I'm not leaving room for the gospel at some point. So And that includes your own life. Because sometimes we have just like you said, I've I had beliefs when I was in high school that are different now. Right. You know, the truth is is we're constantly um, the more information we get, the more informed we become and the better decisions we can make. And sometimes things that we were like, man, that does you know, I would never do that. All of a sudden you're like oh. Well, that actually makes sense because I did not realize right. this was behind this part. Mm -hmm. And what I thought was over here is not exactly as shiny and, and looking as good anymore because this is really just feeding this. You know, this mm -hmm. this this stance helps feed this business and it's not something I'm really believing in, but I thought it was really preventing this, but really what it's doing is hurting these people. And so, you know, you can have... Uh, uh, good intentions, bad uh, written bills, or unintended consequences right. nobody thought out. Right. And sometimes, you know, repealing those or making changes or adapting, um, you know. And then there's things that really shouldn't be partisan to somehow become partisan. I mean, we just had a, um, uh, gosh, it's been, I guess, earlier this year, we've I've talk, been talking to her a ton, but um, we, we had a guest on that's been the main uh, thrust behind uh, getting the nuclear waste taken care of in North County. Well, that okay. seems to me like that's a pretty much non-party. Right, it should be. That should be like, a, let's take care of human, hum, humans. And, yeah. you know, we, we had Absolutely. this thing at this this spot in our history as Americans where mm -hmm. we, we, we had to develop something that we thought to protect us. Um, for those that don't know, watch Oppenheimer. That's a, probably a great little visual if you want. But, you know, we developed that. But but there's consequences. The waste of all that nuclear material and, and atomic material created waste. And that waste has been sitting in open barrels that are, that are destroying lives and causing cancer. Um, you know, just taking care of it properly and putting it in proper storage seems like it'd be a very rational like decision mama teaches you clean up your messes <laughs> exactly yeah yeah and for some reason here we are almost 100 years later and we have not addressed the 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 this ongoing issue and continue to allow it to affect human beings and so it seems to me like uh, if we could start looking at people as humans yeah. get past some party issues and realize that you know at the, at the end of it do what's do what's right it's right. always the best decision. If you know it's right, then do it. Yeah. You know, like you, sometimes you need to forget your party stance and do what's right. And, and for the sake of the people that are doing it, not sometimes, always. <laughs> I should say always do what's right. Right. Not sometimes. Mm -hmm. So some, you should always put people in what's right and wrong before you mm -hmm. go with, you know, party stuff. And so, you know, that, that again, that just seems so... Uh, it's bizarre to me that that we are almost a hundred years later and haven't addressed that need, and that should be a, a, a easily a bipartisan mm -hmm. issue to take care of on both sides, and yet it is not. It, 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 yeah, Turning. lingering stuff that should be addressed, and so all, all that to say. It's good to hear. I'm actually refreshed in this conversation here. And somebody's like, I just want to serve people. Mm -hmm. Yes, I come from a biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have those those biases because I believe, the, the you know, Ten Commandments and things like that are my, my perspective of right and wrong. But right. I never want to take away from people's humanity. I never want to not have a listening ear. I don't want to be afraid to say I'm wrong. And mm -hmm. I always want to make what's in the best interest of, of people as long as it's through the... the, the, the um, uh, grid of my my biblical worldview right so and everybody comes with a bias like people may hear i'm a christian and so they're like oh you've got a bias everyone has a bias everyone has a worldview that they apply to how they do life and i've been as i've been running i've been talking to people with um worldviews on certain issues where whoever is on the side of this issue can do no wrong but 
nothing is perfect in this world. And so there are, there are some areas where that issue, even if they agree with that issue, there may be some things wrong in the way that it's being approached. And so. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. We see that. I mean, you know, I, I, um, on a conservative side and we see that a lot. I mean, you know, um, uh, we, we, right now the the big thing is obviously, uh, and I'll unlock lock the monkey in the room if you've been listening to news, but Trump, right? I mean, we got Trump, we got all these, these political, um, intentional, um, they've, they've gone legal warfare mm -hmm. on Trump. And, uh, and so because of that, there's this, there's this, um, spirit that r rolls up in people to fight for the guy that you feel abused right mm -hmm. and you especially if he's on your side right um and so uh, and i get that okay i get it I, I trust me every time he's lobbied with something that i don't like mm -hmm. I, i'm like man I, I really hope he wins on the other hand then my then my emotions settle down and i realize rationally he's probably not my favorite guy in this election that's running on my side you know i really prefer these two people over him from a policy perspective and what i think they can actually accomplish for this country um you know i'd prefer them on the other hand you know, I get the emotional part of wanting to rally behind that kind of person, but then that emotion often leads for those who don't have a balanced approach in life to he can do no wrong. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. You know, like, like, really, we're going to go there. Like, this guy is so flawed. But I give you, he has had great policy. There's a lot yeah. of good things that we can appreciate somebody. But do not replace Trump with Jesus. Right. You know, like, like. I literally had somebody say there is one man who can save this country and his name is Donald Trump. And I was like, well, Jesus. And she's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> But Donald. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and look, I get this, the rally behind your guy. Uh, trust yeah. me, I get all of that. But there, you got to keep things in balance, as, as especially as believers. Mm -hmm. You know, God has called us to, to be peacemakers when we mm -hmm. can. Okay. Yeah. Blessed are the peacemakers. Um, that doesn't mean that we have to be stepped on. You know, right. meek does not, does not equate to weak. Okay. Right. You can be loving and yet firm. We do it with our kids. If you're a good parent, there's times where the loving thing to do to discipline your kid yeah. right so mm -hmm. but if you do it out of anger you know that you've been in the wrong attitude right. so you don't strike your kid out of anger you strike them um, on the backside <laughs> clarification a little pat on the butt for those who for legal purposes but uh, you know uh, but if uh, but if, if you give them a little swat on the butt um, you want to make sure they understand it's because you know you love them and mm -hmm. they've done something wrong not because of of your anger or that you've done it out of frustration mm -hmm. and uh so I, I really think that, you know, we can we can be lovingly supporting of our candidates. Um, and I would just tell people, too, that make sure you do the research. Right. Don't just assume, uh, even repeatedly, if a guy is coming back repeatedly, politics changes people. You know, and again, beyond Trump, you can go to a candidate who started out with great intentions. And I know many of them who came, got elected, got great intentions, had great hearts. But then somewhere along the line bought into the system or got involved in the in in, in support and the the monster of of either washington dc or jeff city here in missouri they get mm -hmm. caught into these these monsters in in these spin cycles and the next thing you know the person they were and the character they initially brought have now changed and so you don't really like somebody just because they've been there before and represent your party right. okay if they don't represent you well, and they don't represent the character anymore, maybe the best thing for them is not to be there and to be regrounded into society away from the political havoc mm -hmm. and to find somebody else. This is why I'm a big advocate of ter term limits. I do like that about Missouri, right. um, that we have them, but I'm a big advocate across the board because I think when people are in there a long time, it really just opens up the door longer a longer period of time for somebody to find a to have a weak moment and mm -hmm. give you know mm -hmm. we call it the devil foothold but it, up there would be you know lobbyists or somebody a foothold because they're they're needed at the moment and we've all seen movies like that we've watched a movie where you know the guy had principles and values and somewhere along the line hollywood loves to do this to the gay guys they have to compromise on a yeah. value or something and they have to reach out and we it, and it does happen in real life over a long period of time, especially if you're in a cesspool all the time. So. Thanks for the encouragement, Josh. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs>
Missouri has term reality. limits. It is reality. It is reality. But, guard against. but Missouri has a better safeguard because we do have term limits, number yep. one. Okay. Number two, um, you know, if you listen to uh, our podcast with Justin, there are a lot of young people like yourself who are coming up with these new values and who are coming into politics and they're not beholden to just the party. They're not just beholden to the old way of doing things. And, they're, and they want to see real change, mm-hmm. positive change. Mm-hmm. In the state of Missouri, not, not you know, like um, as Justin said, why are we like fifth? We 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 have a, a GOP mm-hmm. um, uh, pretty much across the board from governor all the way down through both sides of of Congress right now. They're all controlled by the GOP. But why why can't we pass basic uh, principled bills through the state? Mm-hmm. And uh, and he goes, because they're all beholden to somebody. But he's, you know, because they get all these special interest money and the special interest stuff. And uh, But as he was saying, things are changing. And mm-hmm. because of that, we can get away from that. And we can start to do what's really in the best interest of people, not necessarily the people writing his checks. Yeah. The people we represent who voted us to get here. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and live out the values that we're talking about, right, right? Right, and it is intimidating just knowing all of the pressures, and even in campaigning, hearing um, people are passionate, and I appreciate that that people are passionate about their views and the issues that are important to them, and um, so there is a lot of push to align to what what everyone is passionate about or what individuals are passionate about and filtering through the passion and the pressure to what is the right thing for the state. And, um, cause it affects, like you said, from the, the Metro to the rural, the laws passed at a state level will affect everyone. And so there's a lot of things that are not within the state's realm of responsibility. They should be for the city or the, the, town to decide and so making sure those boundaries stay in place of not crossing over to micromanage cities and towns and letting them yeah build their own rules and and culture but also still providing a boundary um you mentioned um disciplining and love at work um we talk about not loving our clients off of a cliff that the cultural definition of love is let people do whatever they want which is ridiculous. That's that's not loving. That's a lack of care. That it truly is not caring what happens to someone. So um, real love has healthy boundaries. Um, it's not authoritarian either because that treats someone like a child who they can't they can't decide anything for themselves. You never let them grow up an adult. So at putting that parenting skill into practice at a legislative level that the state is not the authoritarian. Um, the state should not be laissez-faire where anything goes either. There are healthy boundaries, but not authoritarian boundaries. And so what does that look like? Yeah. Yeah. Give people freedom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let them have freedom to make decisions and choices, but make sure that you're protecting the least of these to the best of your ability. Right. And exactly, and those boundaries help the least of these. Yes. So yes, you know for sure. Um, so yeah, I, I love it. The uh, uh, anybody wants to to support you? Do you have a website? I do. Uh, Lobinger for Missouri dot com. Okay, so we'll put that in the show notes, and we'll have it up on the show. People can support you that way. Um, and uh, do you do you need volunteers? Is that how they get to you if they want to volunteer and help out too? Hand out your stuff. Sure. Yeah, they can contact me through the website or um, yeah through the website because that has the email on it too. So yeah. And what's your district? So it's District One Seventeen. It's North St. Francis County, which is south of St. Louis. So we're south on 67 Highway. And what kind of, what major cities would be in there? So it's Bon Terre, Terre de Lac, Deloge, Park Hills. There's a few other cities, smaller cities in there, but. That area, those that, are, that kind of, that area. Yeah, just so. north of Farmington. There's just a little bit of Farmington um, that's in the district. Not, not much at all. But it, Farmington is probably a city that's more familiar to St. Louisans. I don't know. If they go out to St. James, they're, they're driving through there, yeah, right? True, you go, true. You go on a hike or hit the lake or yeah. do any biking or road, off-road stuff. St. Right Joe State Park, State Park, if anybody goes and uh, camps or uh, just 
treks through there or pickle springs is near pickle springs is farmington but st joe park is bumps up right there at the district so okay yeah. well cool all right anything that you want to say before we will wrap is there anything that you wanted to get across that we didn't talk about um i think this i think we covered it i really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you catch up a little bit and yeah and see you and just the opportunity to talk today about my heart for this is not i i i don't feel like i'm a political person necessarily i mean by nature of getting into this i'm becoming more political but just i i really have a heart for people that's what i do vocationally and in ministry through the church and then as a mom i care about what is happening in my kids lives and in my community and i believe we have to be good stewards of our communities and our opportunity to be the light for our generation because what we do or don't do <laughs> The next generation is going to have to pick up the pieces or enjoy the benefits of what what we plant, and so this is that's part of why I'm running as well is just to steward the opportunities and to care for my community better. So I love it. Yeah, I love the fact you said I'm not really a politician because guess what? That's kind of the original plan. We weren't really supposed yeah. to have professional politicians. Yeah, the idea was to have common people from that did a good representation of the area go and be able to represent them, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We want common people. I don't know what this whole ideology that we need a professional politician or somebody that speaks. I mean, that's one of the critiques I hear of Trump sometimes. He's not a politician. I'm like, well, uh -huh. that, that should scare. That, you should take a step back and realize we do not want politicians. Mm -hmm. That, that's part of the issue. Yeah. Part of the problem is we got all these people who give lip service and don't have depth or understanding in different fields. We want not just attorneys in Washington, D.C. We want doctors. We want plumbers. We want uh, construction workers. We want mortgage people. Bring all those perspectives right. and, those, and those valuable uh, backgrounds and mesh them together yep. and find ways that we can better our country or better, in, in your sense, our state and our community. So. Right. Absolutely. I, I love the fact that I don't, I'm not a big fan of, of politicians. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of regular people finding a way into politics because they love people and they have a purpose of something that they want to accomplish, usually for their community or for the betterment of the state or the, uh, or the country. And I think that's what it should be. Right. If you can stick back to those, those, those basic principles, it'll keep you well grounded. And so. if people do that... Um, I always go back to the verse about David accomplished God's purpose for him and his generation. And that is really convicting because there's a, there's a lot that's going on in our generation and we're the ones who are here that have a purpose to accomplish. And so it's, this is my sports plug here as Christians, it's not a sign. We're not spectators. We are in the game. And so how do we, what role do we have? in the game and we we need to go at it get after it work, work hard practice hard play hard work hard <laughs> yeah by god yeah uh, you know um it reminded me one time somebody said well god's providential so why do i need to get in any of that and i go well if that's the case why do you even get do anything right i mean you know like god god doesn't need you that's true but right. god wants you yeah God didn't need you to be alive, but he created you Yeah, and he created you with the purpose. And mm -hmm. he is most pleased. I love John Piper. He's most pleased when you're most satisfied and you're most satisfied. As uh, uh, Eric Liddell said, I feel the pleasure of God when I run. Mm -hmm. You know, he was made with the purpose mm -hmm. to run. So find your purpose, what God's made you for. You'll be yeah. satisfied. God will be most glorified. Yeah. And, uh, and, and when those things come together, it's not work anymore. I love it when Justin was in here talking about being a police officer um, before being, getting into politics. He was like, and it wasn't, I, I got paid for it, but it wasn't work. Uh -huh. I would have done this because uh -huh. I just loved it, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 that's because he was exactly where God created him to be doing the, the work that God called him to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, when those things come together, you'll know it. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's a job. It could be your hobby. But every in podcast for me on the side, these are things that God has created us to do to enjoy and bring him pleasure and glory. And so. it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. No, it never is. Fun. It, it can be super hard and sometimes the most heartbreaking, but also sometimes the most amazing because you get to see God do beyond what you could ever expect and absolutely you wouldn't see that if you didn't take a step up and wake up yeah we'll take you get get out of bed and do what god's called you to do right whatever that is and that includes we live in this free country called america mm -hmm. enjoying the freedom to vote even if you don't think your vote counts 
guess what? Go do it anyways. Why? Because God just called you to, to, to serve Him. And you, all you can do is represent and trust Him with the results. If He's providential, it will happen. You're absolutely right. But guess what? That doesn't give you an excuse not to do something. Right. That should never be your excuse because if you do that, then why did God create you? Yeah. Yeah. With purpose. Yeah. For pleasure. <laughs> so. And God ordains some things to happen through our actions. Like that all doesn't, things. You know, yeah. All things, yes. But it's... Yeah. He created us with a purpose. When right. we do our actions, whether it be, you know, we could, it'd be like having a kid and say, I don't need to do anything because God's ordained and he's going to be alive. Like, yeah, but you still got to feed him. You still got to clothe him. You still got to give him the values and all right. that, right? Like, absolutely. Grow him up in a way that, energy. yeah, grow him, grow him up in a way that, uh, and, uh, you know, you want to, those are all important things. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you don't start a garden by just wishing it. You got to right. go and plant. You got to, right. you know, dig dirt, plant the seeds. Yes, there's an element of faith that God's going to bring the rain. He's going to help the growth. He's going to bring the right conditions for all of it. Um, we can only do so much, but it, you don't eat with the, if you don't if you don't start somewhere. Right. So so, anyways, mm -hmm. voting same way, guys. I hear that all the time <laughs> in politics. Uh, on the flip side, I hear he's providential. And we're all going to take over the world as Christians. So why why not even you know we should all just be growing politicians? And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's the other. That's the other flip side. Yes, we right. should be engaging. We should try to. If God is calling us there, that's important. Yeah, it, it, we're we're called to all the sorts of things, not just politics. Absolutely. We're not called to take over the government. We're called to be active participants in society to share the gospel yeah. of Jesus Christ wherever He has us with yeah. the gifts and talents that He's given us. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well said. All right, guys. Well, hey, thanks for listening on another episode of Triple Play. Um, don't forget to uh, support Becky and her campaign. We'll make sure that uh, the website's on the episodes that you guys can easily access uh, Access it. It'll be in the show notes. Um, if you want to volunteer, want to, you know, uh, support financially, all running costs money. Trust me. So. Yep. They won't say no. They appreciate that. And uh, then uh, the other part of that is th don't forget to support those that support us. Don't forget Andy McCall and his team at Resource One. You got any financial planning needs, give those guys a call. 636 458 1798. Chris Sisk at CS Design. Those guys do our website, our intros, outros, a lot of stuff behind the scenes to help us uh, be successful. We love Chris and his team. 573-436-3717 and uh, Jeff Earhart with State Farm Agency. Uh, those guys are awesome as well. 314-821-JEFF or 5333. And lastly, if you haven't been checking out, make sure on Saturday mornings, you and your family every weekend are checking out or Beyond the Rings with Jeff Wells. Uh, Jeff has uh, had a 20-year ministry, 10 different Olympics and growing, continuing. He's getting ready to go to Olymp number 11. Um, and every Saturday, we're putting out little short stories anywhere from about 7 to 15 minutes long you'll hear jeff talk about one of his uh many encounters many stories uh of the olympics and if you have not checked this out go back and listen to them they're really fun i i love to listen to them they're a great family a little little you know you're going on somewhere on a, on a saturday to go to them to go shopping taking your kids with you going to they're intentionally made for families to be able to listen to check out and enjoy uh, who doesn't enjoy a good olympic story and uh hearing all sorts of stuff from uh uh, from him and uh, so enjoy those and uh, don't forget to support Jeff as well because we are, we are appreciating his time and his ministry and again ministries and candidates they all need money don't mean to be uh, begging for money you don't have to support us this time just support those guys so thanks and we'll catch you guys next episode thanks Becky thank you safe.